Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith, I'm an EEG technologist and on today I'm out in nature with the birds. The reason for that is I got off work early today since I worked my 40 hours and it wasn't too busy. So my supervisor said that I could just go home, but what was I really gonna do at home? Sit around and do nothing? So I decided to come and make an EEG video for you guys. And it's based on my experience this week with troubleshooting. So during an EEG in your career, you're gonna have some troubleshooting issues. Equipment's gonna break, things are gonna go wrong, and you have to keep your composure, stay calm, and be able to figure out what the issue is and fix it so you end up having the best EEG record possible for the doctor, even when things go wrong. So me this week, I just, it was a regular EEG, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, went up, did the EEG, measured, put all the electrodes on, but for some reason, one spot, one of the electrode sites, T3, it was, it was, the impedances were like 200,000 ohms or something, and I know myself that I scrubbed good, the electrode is clearly on, so the first thing I thought of was, first, did I even put the right wire in the right place? I confirmed that, just made sure, that's the first thing you wanna make sure of, and then second, I was like, um, okay, so maybe the wire itself is broken. Because in the past, uh, I've had some wires that just break, especially if they get tangled and you're, you know, ripping them out. Sometimes they break, which is understandable. So I switched out the T3 wire, took it out, unplugged it from the head box, and then I took one of my eye leads, plugged the eye lead into T3, and since I didn't place the eye lead yet, I just put the electrode that I was gonna use for the eye lead into the T3 spot, and then took off the T3 electrode that I had on previously, and then put the new electrode on, just to check and see if it wasn't the wire. So I was still having the problem. The impedances were still sky high, and nothing was working. So, since that T3 area was still not good, not working, I went on to the next thing. Okay, if it's not the wire, the wires were good, I checked that. The next thing I was thinking is maybe it could have been the cable that connects the, uh, the head box to the EEG computer and machine. It could just be that cable itself. Luckily, the patient was asleep. So while I was hooking them up, they were asleep. Luckily, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain something. Oh yeah, my, uh, my machine isn't working. That sounds kind of bad, but you know, once every you know so many EEGs th th something's gonna go wrong so I took out the cable that connects the head box to the EEG machine took it out went back to the uh, the lab I got a new gray cable came in put the new cable in and still not working so it wasn't the cable that connects the head box to the machine and it was not this the wire itself so the next thing I think of, well, maybe it's the, uh, the head box itself. So after that, once I go back, he's kind of waking up at this point. The patient's kind of waking up, so I kind of got to explain it. Okay, I'll be back. Didn't really say too much, just I'll be back. <laughs> so I went back, got a new head box, brought it back in, and I first I switched out the uh, the T3 into the new head box connected to the new head box to the EEG machine and it was still red it was super high impedances still and I started plugging the other wires in and it was starting to look even worse than I had it before because before it was just the T3 and this one every single new wire I plug in the impedances are sky high I'm like oh my god if it's not if it's not the electrode itself if it's not the head box and it's not the wire connecting the head box to the EEG machine maybe the whole EEG machine's broke or something so I just use the old head box plug them back in. I'm like oh well this new one isn't working so I'll just put it back into where it was and I'll just record without t3 and just make a note for the doctor so I turn on the machine start the study I hide the t3 channel since that was the one electrode that wasn't working and well, so while it's running through the study, I'm like, hmm, Jared, you have to figure this out. This is unacceptable. You have to have all your electrode sites. So about 10 minutes into the study, I'm like, Jared, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. So when I tried to transfer it to the new head box, 
I only put in like T3, F7, like a couple wires. I did not put in my, I did not switch out the reference electrode. So without the reference electrode, of course your impedances are gonna be crazy and not really be accurate because the reference electrode hasn't been switched over. So I was like, oh my God, maybe it is the broken head box. So I pause the study and then I transfer every single wire one by one from one head box to the new head box that I brought one by one. And there you have it. Once I plugged in the reference electrode, everything was lighting up good. Everything was under 5,000 ohms, especially the T3. T3 I scrubbed extra hard, so that was probably like 1,000 ohms. <laughs> I was very proud of myself, so like 10 minutes into the study, I had fixed the problem. Master of troubleshooting over here. I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to figure that out. So that just goes to show, in the beginning I would have had no idea what to do. But since I've done hundreds of EEGs, I know enough to troubleshoot and fix my errors or fix or switch out even broken equipment, which usually doesn't happen, but you know, you have to be prepared for everything as an EEG technologist. And this is just my little troubleshooting story. So if you guys have any troubleshooting tips, post them in the comments. I'd love to, uh, love to hear from you guys. You guys are my friends. Anyone who does EEG, definitely one of my friends, because this is such a small field, so I love to hear from you guys. Make sure you hit the like button, I really appreciate it. It helps out my videos, lets me know that I'm doing a good job and that I should continue doing it. So I'm just gonna enjoy some more nature, take a walk for the rest of the day, edit this video, post it up, and I will be making more videos in the future for you guys. So thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful day.